second day of training, we was playing a scrimmage and I had um, a guy um, come in and stud on my whole ankle. My whole, sorry, my whole shin and it left. It left. I have I see these scars right now. Three long scars on my on my on my shin. And I had to come off the game. I had my trial was more for two days. And when I came off, well the coach said, well unfortunately, you know, that is it, thing whatever is the case. And I went to many hotel, me, myself, Kern and them fellas and then they and two saying we just vibe in. Welcome to another episode of the Factor Podcast. This podcast is for Trini football pions and international ones where we get to discuss all matters of football, both Trini and internationally. If you are a football fanatic, this is for you. If you just stumble upon here by mistake, don't worry, what doesn't make mistakes, this is for you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Most importantly, give us your feedback for future content that you might be interested in. On this week's episode, we will be discussing... And I say to myself, I ain't going back home, I'm not going back home. I'm in pain, but... You know, the bad mind and everything kicking in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next day, the tournament was the tournament was going to start. We was playing against New York Red Bulls. Mm. I, you know the um, where's the thing that is that is um put on your foot foot when I get like you know do a surgery you get cut and stuff um. Goes. Yes. 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 The goes. Mm. I put about five pieces of gauze over the thing. Bandage. <laughs> yeah. Put yeah. yeah. my shin pad on top of it and put on our socks. When I reached the stadium, the coach said, um, like, Jaggy, what are you doing here? No, 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 you're done. You're done. I said, no, coach, I can play. I get to go. I take some painkillers and take the agent, everybody there. I said, no, Heather. I said, no, Heather wasn't there. She, so she sent one of her, um, her younger guy who was with the agent stuff. So his name was Dave. He's like, he's like, Jaggy. I was like, no, 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 no. I am perfectly fine. I am playing. I'm ready to go, coach. I'm, I'm ready. He looking at me like I crazy, but I looking at yeah, me like madman. Yeah, yeah, I do this. <laughs> I, <did something. laughs> I, I gotta be a madman to not play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Half gone thing. I, I sit on the bench. It cool too as well. Eh? First time experience in that cool. Yeah. I, I, I only warm. He had to tell me to warm. I warm by myself because I want to keep myself warm. And, I, and yeah. I, at the same time, I just show him that. I already wanted, mm-hmm. and the mistake he make was put me on in that game. Mm-hmm. That was it. After the game done, it on the combine it had about thirty something players on trial, and they only kept four of us: myself, Kern Cupid, <laughs> Osvaldo Alonso, who was playing Ooh, with. He was with Seattle. Mm. Yeah, him was the other one, and a guy named David Kenga from. From Kenya. And so the 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 the, 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 the contract, the contract was nice, the contract was um the contract was around twelve hundred or fourteen hundred US and so I looking at this coach and, and the he's I'm like, all I'm mad. <laughs> I just blew from Trinidad where I was making six to seven thousand dollars and all they're coming to give me a thousand to twelve fourteen hundred US. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I ain't thinking overseas what it was like this. Yeah. So I tell the, the agent when I talk to her, I was like, Heather, I, I know this, this ain't good at all. I, at that time too, I had my f- at 19 years old, 20 years old, 21. I had two kids early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm also people. Yeah. So I was like, yo, I have, you know, people yeah, to yeah. feed depending on me that and working at all at all at all then boom now the opportunity come to go Puerto Rico Islanders I had a three-day trial with them in Panama City Miami and I met up Jose Tellers for there I met Nigel Henry I met Kerry Norrie was there who was the other children yeah what um what um what competition they playing in USL too they played in USL as well Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so when they had a had a trial, Pomena game, play the game. And the funny thing about this game, the coach they had two English coaches. One their name is Colin with bread, Adrian with bread, and Colin Clark. Colin Clark is Irish. He is a big time player out in England. Um, Adrian with bread played Portsmouth and taking the Premier League. 
properly properly well English guy. They well, you know, typical English. Yeah. Um go cool, say right, well, um play in this game, you'll play half an hour, you'll play the first 45 and then I'll take you off. I play the first half, score, and second I say going back to play. So I like it. I don't I don't think it to myself I play half, half first half I score, I did well I inside. I ain't want to go and get no bad performance here for this man to see too much. Second half, yeah. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't, <laughs> yeah, you're taking it in. I, I watch him like, you serious? You say, yeah, you go, my con. I was like, where the ass is this way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when my con don't do my thing. And unknown to me, they already made the decision, right, to sign me, right? And what the agent tell me was, he, they wanted to see, because you know the Caribbean mentality, they have a stigma now, he wanted mm. to test my mental strength. But he didn't know life prepared me for all the moments. <laughs> right, like right, right. This, this yeah. Is <laughs> yeah. And some play was going on late in the game, and I guess I was lazy to run or trap or something. And that man get up and start on me, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And rules that are not, I can't even say on this yeah. interview here. And when the, the end, Danny talking to something, and I and he talking to me, and that's bored on my Everybody, them plus some trying that. Haiti thing, US, wherever, wherever. I just bow down my head and I take my beating. And I just say, okay. And I say, my, no, I didn't know. I say, my, this man, I say, well, that is a day for me. I'm done. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. And when we get to the hotel, um, the agent called me, says, Jaggy, what happened in training today? I was like, I did well in the first half. I, you know, I do my thing and just so this man is coming down on me and thing, whatever. She said, um, she said that was for a reason. Negatively, that would have been it for you. The fact that you stood up, you take the criticism, and you had nothing to say, confirm everything for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, fast forward to Puerto Rico, everything started well there with the team, and you know, I was playing. My first year contract there was like 20, 2000. Two thousand, two thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. but I had bonuses, game bonuses where I start, I, I, I score, I start the game, I get a hundred dollars bonus. I come on, I get fifty dollars assist, I get fifty dollars score, I get a hundred dollars. <laughs> I start every game. Yeah, yeah. So you know. Carry the tally up a little bit. Um, the first year was, was was nice. We had a good group of guys amongst us, Trinidadians, of course. We had. Some Jamaicans coming later on. We had some Haitians. Um, we had um, one Italian guy in the team. We had one Irish guy in the team. The rest was Americans. Um, one guy from Panama. Two guys from Cuba. Puerto Ricans, obviously. Um, we had a nice little team that, that year. Um, you seem to have a real, um, you seem to have a real like photographic memory, but like you just <laughs> tap into something and you're like you see in the full roster and in, in your in your yeah, mind. Yeah. Well, you know, Ash. I shared the dressing room with them guys. We live together, uh, you know, yeah. so um, it had to forget those memories because we had some trying times. We had, we went through together and we had some some glory days, like um, I think the first year. So the USL is the regular season and the playoffs. I think we won the regular season, losing the playoffs. Mm. Right. We started to play the CONCACAF Champions League. I think um, to this date, I think we are the most successful team. Mm. Come out of the USL. Well, later on, the MRSA MLS seems to have reached further and further in the competition. But yeah. at that time, we um we was playing against Santos and and the 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 Cruz Azul and the, this one from Panama and this one from Honduras and we mash up all of them. Hmm. What kind of years? Um, twenty. That's like what twenty what twenty fifteen twenty sixteen. No, no, that's two thousand eight. Oh, yeah, two thousand eight. Yeah. yeah. Two thousand eight. So, don't tell me Santos had Neymar or still no. No, Santos Laguna from Mexico. Guys. Okay, guys, okay. Guys, okay. Guys, okay. Guys. <laughs> club, club, club champions. Club, 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 not club, 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 yeah, club, Caribbean club champions. Yeah, so yeah. I think we reach the semifinals. We lose against um, we we lose against we lose against Cruz as well on penalty kicks. Right? Had we won that game, we would have went on to play. Um. Another team, I think it was some one of them Mexican teams, and then we was went we was were playing the winner of the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how far we reach. Yeah, for the Club World Cup, that's how far we reach. 
um oh, nice second one. second tier i think we 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 um we won the the the, the regular season again lost in the playoffs the third year we won we come third in the, in the regular season and won the championship the third year in okay, Portugal. Okay, okay, okay and by then coming back and playing games back and forth with the national team um 2000 that was 2009 that's when um francisco maturana was the national team head coach and he took mm. some guys to um a bunch of guys to argentina for a month preseason. um so out of the i think it was like around 30 something guys he took to argentina and out of the 30 something local guys he was only selecting he was only selecting i think it was like around nine or eight guys locally mm. for the 2010 world cup qualifiers um we had some again we had some huge names across the corner glenn the mcfarlane denzel tio ball the team was stacked all them top players and them sid grady the team stacked the team stacked and there was only choosing kevin jones was coming back jason cutter was coming back stone john was coming back mm -hmm. no it was only four strikers he was going that's right Cornell Glenn played in the World Cup. Right. So he was the automatic favorite. And I I um uh, we played about uh, five or five or six um Argentine teams there. In them five or six games, I probably scored like around four goals. Played well. And um I was the young me and Keon Daniel as well, but Keon is a top player. So two of us was the two youngest guys to make that team as well. Out of the 30 something players, I think they choose me and him and Cornell and maybe Denzel and Jan Michael Williams and one or two other players mm -hmm. um, for the games and them number. So um, that national experience was nice in Argentina. We spent a month in Argentina to take us to the Boca Junior Stadium. You know, the whole Maradona fanfare, everything. So that was a nice experience. Um, yeah, that was a nice experience. And then 2010, was my last year in Puerto Rico and then I went to Rochester Rhinos in the USL again mm -hmm. in 2011. Now in 2000, in 2009 in Puerto Rico, I had a chance to, um, Columbus crew wanted to sign me. It was pretty much like a done deal. Them time in was like developmental contract. I think that there was offering like around 22 to 25,000 a year US. So in the CONCACAF Champions League, I was doing so well that um, they, we, we had to play them. And the day that we had to play them, the game before, I pulled my hamstring. So I was out for like six to eight weeks. And that deal fell through because of that. Hmm. So they actually came in for me. They came for me. And um, the deal fell through because I, I had a hamstring injury. I was out for like, I was out for like, um, no, I was out for like six. No, I was out for like, yeah, six to eight weeks here. And this whole time, you have the same agent, right? The same agent working yes. for you. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's okay. some like that agent. It's some like that agent will like work pretty hard to to make sure like they were doing. Yeah, that yeah. She, for me, you. she took me in two thousand seven. She took me to Sweden on a trial. Hmm. Um, that was my first experience out in Europe. Um, did well. Um, was a bit difficult to adapt to the cold and everything out there. I did well with have a contract, but I think um my team in Puerto Rico wanted I think we wanted some crazy amount of money or something like that and the team wasn't willing to yeah. pay that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so if you don't mind um if you could fast forward to how you end up in, in Thailand. At the end of the twenty eleven season, um I had a friend who was playing with me in Rochester, you and see Marshall. He was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when I was in Rochester, um, we were looking for a defender, and the coach said, oh, yo, we're looking for a defender. I was like, yo, I know my friend. He was playing Alec LA Galaxy at the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, um, Good you know, my friend looking for a team, blah, blah, blah. He's like, all right, cool, bring him in. And he came, and we played there that season together. He left and went out in, in, in Thailand on, um, I think it was a trial and stuff. And the team that he went to, China Hornbill, they were looking for a striker. So I mm -hmm. sent him my CB. Well, I link up with an agent across it. By that time, I had left my agent. 
Okay. Like, okay. Got an agent across there and um, he organized the trial and everything. And it was a bit difficult to, to reach across it because then I had um, just married, the first married, and then um, discussing the situation with my ex wife. She was like, hey, why are you going quite across it now? Blah, blah. You know, it's not safe. She she detailed me as much as she could, obviously, in her best interest, and I was just seeing opportunity. She right. could have said what she want. Yeah. I was going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opportunity, of course, is a chance to make good money and everything, right? And um yeah. I remember the was the agent said to me, he said, um, you know, in order to get something that you want, you have to prepare to do something that you never did because I was getting problems to go back home to get a visa and all them kind of thing. And when he said that to me, I denied, I, I tell her, listen, I go home. I book a ticket the night, come to Trinidad, because I, I was in New York. Come to Trinidad, went to the embassy, get a visa, and, and leave, and went across. Meet the team, um, training. Train for like about, train for like about two weeks. And then it had um, it had a tournament that was playing in Bangkok, a preseason tournament. And the after the tournament, it had like around two or three days for the window to close. Hmm. Asia difficult. Um, being a black man in Asia at that time, um, the the uh, the amount of race and abuse I I, I dealt with um, verbally, physically. Yeah. Again, it it bothered me, but I felt if life didn't prepare me for those things yeah. in my early childhood, I probably would have break down or or um, things wouldn't have worked out. So. Obviously, in, the, in those difficult moments growing up as a child, I think, and why all this happened to me, like, you know, but I wasn't seeing it. You know, I couldn't see it because only now and then I was seeing where the preparation, you know, was made. And um, yeah, they, they was like, in the city there, we, me and you and she was probably, it had a other black guy on the team, but we was like the blackest people in the whole city. The people that still literally stay at here, they're coming and they're rubbing their hands and their oh, no. fingers to see if any color coming off and they're talking about mm. you, they're painting, they're staring, you know, the 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 calling you up. well now that I know bad words and the, it, it was the most unpleasant atmosphere a human being could ever wow. go through. But mm. I was seeing opportunity. So did the club did the club provide anything to try to help all you or just fit into the culture and things like that? You have to come and show them why you warrant of being on this team. Yeah. They don't care to make you feel extremely comfortable. Right. That dog eat dog will out there until you sign. And remember, I is a no name coming into that place. Right, right, right. I didn't come in there with a stigma or a thing playing out in Europe or wherever. I come from in the US, you understand? So I had to yeah. prove to myself. And um, I remember we was in the tournament. Me and you and see on the bus going to Bangkok and we look at each other and say, he said, Jaga, this is a thing. I say, yeah, bro. I say, we, he, well, he obviously, he know the journey. I say, bro, we had to make it in. Mm. The team was allowed seven foreigners at the time. The team already had signed seven foreigners. Ooh. And still had us there on trial. We're going to play the, the but this, the, the registration, everything didn't close yet. So we're going to play a tournament in Bangkok and um, I I came on, scored, you and see, played the next game, played well and everything. And um, still undecided on what going on. Then when we finished the tournament, the agents say, yeah, they want to sign you all. But they promised us, if they sign on us, we will sign for X amount of dollars. And then when they say they're signing us, they say they're giving me Y amount. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, mean, must, I say, I don't want that to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You answer, look at me and say, you say, I don't know about you. He said, but it's good money, eh? yeah. Right, right. What was promised? Right. It wasn't the same, yeah. Yeah. You answer, say, I don't know about you, no, Jaka, but I. <laughs> I, I take it. <laughs> we, we try to negotiate other little things, um, bonuses, whatever, whatever. Mm -mm. Flat salary, oh, and they gave me a bonus of two hundred. 200 US a goal or something like that. I know choice. I say, right, I take it. Um, I'm negotiate. I'm not negotiate. Sure, though. Yeah. Time, <laughs> time, 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 time
sign and everything, join the team, um, join up with the team or something. Well, I, I did well, you know, um, extremely well. Um, unknowing now, three months into the season, um, the the manager comes like, we finish, um, we finish, we finish, we finish um, pay your agent for this stuff. I was like, what stuff? The um, the sign bonus. I was like, what sign bonus? I watch you and see you and see what's me. All right. Um, so apparently the well unknown to us, I didn't know it had sign bonus and all that thing in the past number. So the agent, I think, what was said, I think he collected. I think it was like around forty thousand dollars for both hmm. of us. Hmm. Forty thousand. US. Um, yeah, forty thousand US to collect. <laughs> so, well, I I blow here, and that was the end of it. Um, because at that time I, I, I figured I could have get my way around the first, first six months of the season, real struggle. They, they, I had a two year contract. They literally cancel, wanted to cancel our contracts. Me, Johansi, we had a guy from Spain, a guy from Brazil. So like I said, seven foreign star team, they already had seven foreign players. They signed two of us and they bump off two guys, mm. a Russian and a Brazilian. Now, this Brazilian, he played in Brazil with Romario and all of them. Mm. But he was old. Yeah. So they bump off two of them. And they put two of us on the team. Um, so it was myself, Yohansi, a Spanish guy, a Brazilian guy, a Welsh guy, a Korean guy. Yeah. Um, and so we just did vibe and everything. Season was real tough. It was hard to adapt to the food, the lifestyle, the culture. I mean, it was... What do, about the level of, what do you think about the level of football between you, U.S. Salanting and there was harder, same? The football in the U.S. will always be more physical. Mm-hmm. But across there is technique and passing and playing and stuff. Mm. Um, it was hard to adapt, you know, um, because the guys, I know my ability, but they don't know my ability. So it's hard mm. for them to trust, man. I start obviously season starting the games and everything, but then for sure, I didn't score no set of goals. Um, 15 games, 14 or 13 games, I think. I probably scored one or two goals, struggling, struggling. They mm. want to cancel our contract and stuff. And I was offering a package at three months salary, and they canceled my contract. Right. I tell you and say, I was like, yo, bro, I'm not taking this. I ain't taking no three months. Money song is nice up front, but I don't want that. I have a two-year contract. I seen it all. I keep going training every day. We think, we think, we think. Um, boom now. At the top striker for the team, he had, his contract was ending and he was negotiating with them. No, I need doghouse. When I mean the dog, doghouse. I yeah. in the back of the doghouse. Yeah. And he was negotiating. <laughs> the mistake he made was stay home and day they had game. Mm. And they had to come and fuck me out of the doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> From that moment, that was in 2012. Yeah. To my last game I played in 2019. The only time I sit down on the bench is if my foot I can walk. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so I I destroyed the league year in I broke my foot the year after 2013 I broke my foot um, out for 8 months um, come back I had a 3 year contract the team wanted to cancel because I wasn't because Asia funny mm. at that time I was only 5 for another star team I was the main striker of the team they have me on that contract they can't replace me with, with, with another striker because the window closed, they, they can't go over the quota. Mm. So they must try to ship me out to bring in somebody, obviously, to start the season for them, XYZ. Um, I didn't agree to it. Well, well, I took them to FIFA, win the case and everything. Really? Yeah. Mm. They, they literally bullied me into signing a document. When I mean bullied, I mean like, all right, so let me go back a little bit. The culture, they, the, the team's owned by the team's owned by statements like senators and politicians, I would say. Mm, powerful people. Powerful people. Mafia is... 
yeah. mafia. You know, we present every team when he come training the town like about three or four bodyguards around him. Um, it are people, you just seen people in the stands, people so people that's not watching, you know, he's a politician now, boy. And he had a, a bodyguard by him. If he go left, he go left. If he sit down, he goes. And they those were the kind of people that they were trying to intimidate me with a sign and thing and whatever. Me wasn't taking on them. They were that to kill me. Yeah, so, no, they know where this man from. This man from yeah, man. I don't know. I, um, <laughs> now, I do my thing the first year, mash up in the league, and what make them sign me over to a three year contract? A team from Bangkok come in for me and they ask, they ask, they call a call. And I remember um, at the end of the season in 2012, I saved the team from relegation. I scored about 12 goals, 10 goals or 12 goals, I think. Do did well, well, I think. And I remember the, 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 the I think it was caretaker, somebody for the team coming in lobby at the hotel and Grown man, I telling you, yeah, when I was leaving, because he thought I had linked up with the team and I was leaving. I born in tears and then he said, You're leaving. Thing. I said, No, I come back. Thing, whatever. He said, This team come fair. Uh, yeah, he was talking about them. I said, No, I, they obviously they reach out, but we never really think, we never really um, come to agreement. And I, I wanted to stay as well. So I tell um, I tell the coach, Well, a new, we had a new coach coming. I said, Coach, um, I explained to him all how they treat me, whatever, whatever. And under him, I, I, I think we have played like around. 10 games, I scored like 7 or 8 goals. So he was happy with me. I was the number one player. He told me he getting rid of all the rest of the players <laughs> and keeping me. Yeah, that was his exact was He set on all the players and he, yeah. I, he keeping me. Um, he, at the end of that season, 2013, I come to play at the digital tournament in Tobago. Right. And he told me he was coming to Trinidad because he want them time or them time now would reach the three foreign players that team. So he wanted me as a striker. He wanted to have centre midfield and a centre back. Wow. Something fine, really fine. So he makes mm. such a big impression that he come to Trinidad for all the um, designated players. When he was coming to Trinidad, before he leave, he said, I'm getting rid of all them foreigners on the team here and I'm remaining coming to get two players. <laughs> two players. I say I want to get two players who could, who could help you. He's like, all right, cool. Why he was coming to the tournament now, something with his visa, he can get through with something. And he said, here's what's going on. I've given you the responsibilities to bring two players to the team. They're not coming on a trial, they're coming to sign. This is your responsibility. Of course. That's the responsibility I had from <laughs> my performance. And yeah. automatically, I, I reach out to Denzel Teobol and Sion Power. Right. And... Talking to Denzel, I was like, yo, the opportunity. Yeah, well, see, and grab it because he was still in Joe Public, you know. Yeah. Things were, he come off a break, but he had a, 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 a rugged season, I would say. When I mean rugged, in terms of dealing with them and everything. Yeah. I tell Denzel, like, here's what's going on. This opportunity here, yeah, I can make some money. Well, I, obviously, I would have known about the run ins, the sign bonus I could get, the extra push yeah, I could ask yeah, by then. Yeah. I, 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 could, I was learning the language a little bit so I could get my way around the love many country. The love <laughs> many <laughs> I do nothing without, I mean, the fans, I can't go and eat in peace. They come in the mob in here, they're by the hotel. I can't drive me, the police and them, when the police and them stop me, they, they, they want my shirt on my back, they want oh, autograph. I would <laughs> demand. Yeah. You know? what, what, is, what is Jesus in Thailand, by the way? Sorry. China. China FC was the name of the team. China was the, the city. It's, I was okay. 200 kilometers away from Bangkok. Okay, okay. But again, all of that, fan fame and everything they used to tell me i wasn't acknowledging uh, mm. enough because when them will come and go that that no football is number one sport in thailand right, right in asia right so they listen to me they crazy about football yeah and while i like it and appreciate it i suggest be normal hey smile take a picture whatever but i will, i never and again because of how i am and how i grew up i never let that go to my and i see my teammates every chance they get them in front of the camera yeah, yeah. Right, that right, just right. Me. i just i was just morning back thing and i let my football do all the talking yeah. to each his own eh? to each his own yeah. you know guys but that was my thing and um, yeah, so you say like bring the two players. I talked to Denzel. Denzel was going on a trial in Turkey. You know, he wanted to play in Europe. I was like, bro, this opportunity is not a trial. This is a secure deal. They don't the team, yeah. Yeah, he's now he wanted to take up the challenge wherever he went. And 
me and Sion. Sion come on board. I think when he came, the manager, the, the president of the team was in Malaysia doing something. So he'll sign in delay by like a week or two weeks. But he signed eventually. Right. And we played the 2013 season together. I come and end up breaking my foot. Hmm. He was struggling a little bit of really say adaptation. Then he went on to when I lead the team, he went on to establish himself and did well, well right. there for the team. Um, and from then on, I bounced around a lot of teams because um, it's real unstable in terms of. Um, so if you if you now every year I play the teams that I play, I was the best player in the team at um, top score, um, double figures every year, all them stuff. But they invest crazy money in the league, mm. so they want you to score fifteen to twenty to twenty five goals every year and you have to be on point now it's three foreign players that team yeah they shop for players all over the world europe i know big players come from europe who play la liga who play this come japan wherever then they come into play so for mm. you to remain on a team with three foreign players mm. you have to be exceptional yeah, and that's that that, yeah. that, yeah, that how that's how we was coming from the caribbean myself myself see on power and um we 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 tug it out, you know. We tug it out, like I say. I, my thing, I used to beat them with speed, and they're a little short now, boy. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, you look, you look you look real, you look real big in them highlights. I was like, "Who's my six five? What's your height? What's your height? Um, six foot. Six foot. Six foot. Yeah, I over them, and when I running when I running them down, they can't catch my tongue. So I yeah, just yeah, yeah. goes mm. fast breaks and them kind of stuff, now, boy. So, but by then I, I started. Feel, little, I started right, learning right, right. more, more talking the language because right. the racism never stopped. Yeah. There are wealthy people and there are poor people, and the wealthy ones, they do mingle up with the lower class and stuff. And they, they, mm. they, 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 they there's a country that the more white you are, yeah. fair skin, because I had my teammate was from Wales, he white like chalk. He can do nothing wrong. Right, right, right. right. He's, a, he's a legend in Thailand as well, too. Proper, proper, proper football player. He's a legend. Right. He played mm -hmm. a legend. Um, can I cast some kind of vibes? Yeah. Colorism, and, and colorism. Oh, yeah. That's all you have to deal with, boy. I had to, I, I, at that time, I feel so sad that I, my my kids came up in 2013. And I remember one time we sit down eating our restaurant and my daughter told me, like, Daddy, why everybody watching me? And I, I, I can't answer her. You know, and I just, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I remember just getting up. And when I mean every, when I mean everybody watching it in a restaurant with about 20, 30 people and everybody forget everybody. and watching you like you as an ornament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember for me, my young daughter as well. So we just get up and leave. And I remember I go into the stadium the next day. And I met the owner of the restaurant and the president. And he my guy come and apologize and thing. I was like, I, I mean I cool, I mean I could deal with it, but you know, you know my, my, my family, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you apologize and this and that. So, but um, the opportunity, I mean, it have it could make a real nice living off of football out there. Um, once I like it, I like you. Um, the opportunity has come um, fast, but it's only three foreign players. So you have to be on your game. And they mostly go for attacking players. You have to be on your game. You have to be on point. You have to be on point. You have to be on point all the time. And that's how I, I was able to survive out there for for eight, nine years, you know, um, bounce around with teams, a lot of teams are bounce around with, but I was never, a year never passed without, with, with, um, with I being without a contract. Right, right, right. right. I had contracts after contracts after contracts, so, you know, um, it was difficult, and then it gets to a period where I, could, where I was speaking Thai about 80%. Um, yeah. So, so was, was it, was it the, so was it the, uh, like, opponents and thing also, like, being racist and things, saying things yes. on the it's field? Your teammates, but the teammates, teammates. Yeah. Your teammates. yeah, your teammates, yeah, teammates. Because on a deep culture, isn't it? Because by then, I would have, you know, on every team that I went to, not blowing my own trumpet, but I would have been the top guy on the team. And right, the displacing men and thing. The affordabilities that I would have, they wouldn't be able to have. That. I remember we used to be playing pool in the club, also with the presidents of the team and them kind of thing. With the Thai right, culture. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I really associate yourself with with them status and people, right? And, right, right. and the higher you are in status, well, the, the greeting is like somebody cap. So the higher 
the personal and status, the lower you have to bow to say, you know, mm. it, the culture, when I get to an eye, well, from being there so long, I understand it. But for somebody who now go into the you got to you gotta post to certain things, but you can't because it's a kingdom with a king and a queen, and mm -hmm. you could get as much as fifteen to twenty years if you just mention something bad about the king. Mm. You can even go missing. Mm. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I assume, I assume. So, um, you mentioned um one one last. So, it's two things. I read, I read something interesting. You say um. You say it had this thing where like the the opposing fans is sing to you at the end yeah. of a game or something, so yeah, so you 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 you're, you're paying respect for like how a better mm. team for the traveling mm. team. So at the end of the game, the, the eleven or the whole team go across to the opposing fans, they will sing the the was well, I mean it's like the, the song or the anthem or whatever. They sing to you in the club, they cheer you on, whether the game could end good, bad or indifferent. Hmm. It's mandatory, it. but uh, send a respect that you go and, wow. and and then after you go back to your fans. Okay, yeah, okay. Mm, that's yeah. interesting. And then the other thing you just mentioned is uh, so you say money come into the league. Where that money come from? Is it like foreign money, oil money, mafia money? What, what money is this? That money self yeah. and yes. Thailand is a rich country. Okay. Yeah. Thailand uh -huh. is. is Time, yeah, yeah. Money, the real money does run through Thailand. I, 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 I never really look up Thailand. Is the real most place I ever see. I live in the States for a little bit, but it's the most place I ever see Ferrari, Bentley, Rolls Royce, this oh. Rice, that Royce, all kind of Royce in, yeah, in yeah, Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Because my team had, when the Range Rover just came out in 2012, the Range Rover Evoque, right? He had yeah. one of that and three Porsche. And he mm. make a joke and tell me if I score 20 goals a season, he gave me the Range Rover. I obviously I'm thinking he on shit. And yeah. one of the tell me if you score 20 goals this season, he dead serious. Yeah. Probably I might like give you would I give you something crazy. I would just go 19. No, I I remember, well if the first half of the season I wasn't playing, that when I was struggling, I went to cancel right. contract and I, yeah. and I, yeah. season, I mm. played like about 15, 16 games. And I score like around eleven goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if they didn't bench you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, now I think it was a second man. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a process because then I had more vengeance when I was coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so yeah, learning Thai, um, speaking the language and um communicating with, with the teammates and understanding the culture more. Visiting more places, doing sightseeing, yeah. all them kind of, you know. You say the food in Nagrejian food. That's how it's all the food, huh? Yeah, the food yeah. is. I mean, Asian Thai culture. The first time I experienced that is when I went to Japan with national team in two thousand six. I remember right. we go now in the morning to eat breakfast and hey, boy, legs wherever you go. When I bust the egg, I see everything around. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, good. Oh, yeah, but I forget what they call that. Yes, there's the thing where it's like um. Where it's like it it it's Santa form the, the yeah them them the machine. And and and, and, and the, eat food, it. the food in Thailand similar, and I I struggle for a while, boy. But um, we used to, we used to, there's a have to cook for something sometimes. We started to buy Western meals and them kind of thing, boy. Oh, Until wow. now, I I I miss in Thai food. You know that. <laughs> What's your you favorite know? dish? What's your favorite Thai dish? Um, something called pad Thai, cow pad yeah. Thai. Um, kapao kai, all those is nice. Penang curry, they do a nice curry. All them is nice, nice dish. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. They, right. they had a, they, they had them thing in the Thai restaurants in the US. So uh, <laughs> everything, everything you say there, I know where it is. I know where it is. Yeah. But, but not, but not authentic though, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So from Thailand, Doctor Sabo Chikere. Well, I had a, I had a correct, and then. Injury with my ACL, uh, blow that, um, 19, 2021, 19, 2019, August, if June the 29th, I did the surgery on the 15th year. So that was it. That was all for a while in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, just, just when the pandemic coming through, um, come home, did the went back, did the rehab, I still wasn't ready for the beginning of the season. Um, 2020 came back home for three weeks. At the time, my uh, ex girlfriend was pregnant with my son. Came home for three weeks, February 28th. 
was supposed to leave on March the 15th, the 10th of March, I love the borders, and I remain here ever since. Okay. So, you see career, and then you decided that was it, or is only after all that, those obstacles, you say, boy, I think I got here. Well, in, in, in remaining here, with the lockdown, the fees, the gym, all that thing, so I couldn't go and do proper rehab. So, I said, do rehab on a concrete strip where I was staying, and um, we were living together there, and um, that I food I re in Germany, my meniscus started yeah. to do. So that kind of shock on that kind of, yeah. So it was the injury that was correct, and then it was the, the, the circumstances. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I was out for like yeah, a year after, after football. Um, One thing I, age, I do know. Age catching up on me. Um, I had offers to go back, and I had a lot of offers to go back. Um, but the, the offers wasn't attractive. Yeah. The COVID come and destroy the, the, the financial situation in the league as well. The league keeps coming, postponing, starting, postponing. The COVID real disrupt the financial flow because most of the team was all my big businessmen was state government. Nothing wasn't going on. The country shut down. Nobody was making money. So they're not spending money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the offers on them wasn't really attractive. So um I just say why um you know my time my time is my time and I just I mean it was really depressing mm -hmm. to be I honest. Because okay. you know I never really do anything else I, uh, you know to function outside of football. That'd be a big challenge, yeah. 20 years of your life, day. that's yep. a significant portion of your life. So, yeah. so what are we going to you know? Well, um, I started, started, well, um, I started to take little um courses in terms of business and read a lot of books and 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 talk to a lot of people who could mentor me from a business standpoint. Um, I made some, I made some, some, some bad investment in the earlys with lack of financial literacy yeah. um yeah. made some bad judgment um recover from some but i didn't have the knowledge because uh, um i would say i wasn't thinking about it too much because in my football heyday i was only focusing on football you know i didn't have time right. to think about anything else so tap into some business and stuff here so far um things just recently um tap into something there yeah, about a month ago which um going pretty well i would say um um but i'm learning from a lot of things now where i just keeping humble i mean, i make a lot of mistakes i make i make a lot of mistakes um that i am very apologetic for in life on the whole and just try to learn as and fit into the society and the mentality back in Trinidad because we've been out so long, I struggle a lot coming back home and dealing with mm, yeah, really, yeah, just the home now. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the private sector, the public sector, the, mm. the, the customer service. That does the dealing with people with me was real hard and I and I find myself losing it at times because it's something I was not accustomed to. You know, I come from a place where everything is literally handed to me and now I had to come and, you know. Yeah. Um, so I just focusing on 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 better myself from a mental a mental standpoint. Um, you know, um, my very young son trying to be the best I can be with him because my first two kids I was away for a big part of the life playing football mm, and yeah, yeah. God bless me the opportunity to be here with my son. So, um, yeah. Um, so just trying to focus on business right now, to be honest. So, you have any, like, unfinished business in football, you think? Like, you're, you're seeing, like, you might do anything, which in sports or anything, like, next question when, where you came from? Anything yeah, like well, I, I, I enter coaching. Um, actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to start that coaching course Wednesday. Okay. Like you want to take the the, the, the or something? Yeah, I'm going to start yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. I have a team here and there. I have a team in Manzana that I used to sponsor over the year and stuff. Um, but um, we're just trying to diversify my portfolio and have all the chips available. So just in case one pop up, I know I, I, you know, I have the necessary requirements. All right. And, and so, so we can, we can end up with um, Isaac's, um, Isaac's the same questions. I will uh, say yes, because I'll yes, no. ask it. Go ahead. Yes, no. Well, all in all, Given the gift of experiences, the gift of hindsight, you mentioned that um that you had some positive influences that made give you that drive and give you that advice to succeed. What advice you would give to a young player starting up? 
and was going to, you know, to get you. What advice you would give? What do you, what do you think? Well, I, 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 I would give the harsh reality, right? Mm. I can't want you to succeed more than you want to succeed for yourself. Mm. You understand? And it, some, so some people might come across harsh, but if somebody has said that to me, harsh things, like I said, the way how I grew up. Yeah, I, harsh I, is I, yeah. I can't want you to succeed. No, everybody need that little push, that little drive, that little extra motivation here, yeah, but yeah. I just think for the youth growing up, find your passion dedicate your time to your passion work on your craft work on better in yourself keep focus because talent is not everything it had way better guys than me more talented guys than me as i explained to you i made a national team before every single one of them uh, uh out of my whole group i was the only one leave and went out so the talent again is a true saying i could attest it is not is necessary but it's not the top of the chart. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So that's yeah. that determination and that drive, that hunger, that burning fire. You need to keep that fueling all the time. Whatever it is, you need to channel that. Work on your craft. Be dedicated. Be disciplined. And mm -hmm. man, I tell you, if you don't believe in God, you don't have a chance. Yeah, if you do true. what? If you can do what? You don't have a chance. Yeah. Because yeah. I, like, I want to say once, you say, boy, even if you feel... Like you're trying to make a jackass into a resource. The only way you could do it is if the jackass want to run. You know? Yeah. And, and that's that, that, that the reality of the situation. <laughs> yeah. If a man don't want it for himself, you could want it how bad. You could say what you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel that. I really feel that. I really feel that. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the questions we always ask. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Before, before, before you ask the question, yes, sir. Mm. Something. You still watch football? You're into football a lot? Yeah, yeah, of course. What do you support? Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea, man, boy. Yeah, born yeah. yeah. and my, sec my second daughter <laughs> name, my, my second daughter name is Chelsea. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. How, you feel, how, you feel, how you feel about the, the how they want to throw your little owner? Any thoughts? Um, about? that football is is that is bigger than. That's yeah, politics. politics. That is that is that is world war yeah. stuff. They yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, clamp yeah. down and pressure. So I I think it's unfair. Yeah. But because he his football, he like what he doing for Chelsea and the, the Premier League has nothing. To, I I don't know. Maybe it has yeah. things I don't know. But yeah, from what yeah. I know, I just don't like it. Right, right, right. So um, your favorite Chelsea player? Didier yeah. Drogba. Drogba, <laughs> of course, right. <laughs> Right. Nice, so nice. we was it thoughts on Lukaku? <laughs> um a difficult moment for him. Um I think the expectations was always high because coming off of Inter Milan and yeah. you know the success he had there, coming back into Chelsea and and, 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 and England in the Premier League. Yeah. Um it it it's difficult for him before for he playing style and I think when in 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 Thailand there he was the top guy um, coming into Chelsea he have a lot of big players around him as well too so I don't know it, it's it's watch me when I going through that moment is the most frustrating thing because you know, I've been through it already too yeah mm -hmm, and sure. the way all the fans is in, in England they when them down on their back they they all criticize near the media wherever wherever. That's yeah. added pressure in. That's not anything mm -hmm. easy to deal with. And trust me. Yeah. That's and real social media <laughs> being how it is right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel it on that one. Roy Keane's yeah. talking about it every week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, every, every day, like, though. Every day. Yeah, them, them ain't care. Them ain't care. Them telling you black is white. They ain't care. Yeah. Yeah. They have a platform yeah. and they're attacking you. Yeah. yeah. I mean. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, you're... You, you, you do, do your thing. Do your thing. Right. No scene. So... We asked it, but we kind of had it in a narrow window. But I want to repeat that question now. Your favorite, your most treasured footballing memory is what? No, it's it changed as a overall context of your career, or yeah, what? um, representing the country with the national senior team. All right, 
At the age of 19. At the age of 19. At the age of 19, I would have played all levels. As in Japan? Yeah, at the age of 19, I would have played at all levels. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's the one moment, if you had a chance, that you could have do it over or get back? Or have a different outcome? Where would have been? Hmm. Football wise? Yeah, football wise. Football wise. We, we want to go into uh, football wise. You keep it football. Yeah. So you, you really don't have no regrets about nothing in football? Regret. Regret is unprofessional at times. Especially in um in, in, in my in my in my obviously explains it how I where I come from and everything. There's nothing mm. for me to regret. Yeah. Everything but you not, did. but not regret, but not regret. What's the what's the lowest moment? What's the yeah. when I broke my foot in twenty thirteen? Because mm. my kids was there, my kids my kids saw that and then mm. uh, my career never was the same at the same highest after. level after that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Okay. 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 All right. All right. All right. Um, Kendall. Um, bro. Oh, the thank you for coming on, but not just coming on, right? So we've been doing this podcast for about a year and three months now. Just now, eh? Yeah. Kendall. Nah, that's the new right. No, Jaggy, no feel no how. It does sound like if it's a Susu up on the scheme, but yeah, really mean it now. But yeah, that's not excuse, right? <laughs> I just got that big one. Excuse, me, right? Excuse, me. You don't, you don't mean it, right? It's not, it's not, it's not Susu on a new channel, right? 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 Go ahead now, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Three months. I sound like a smart man. So yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, you can try this, you can try this so so is, um, yeah, we appreciate that, but it's not appreciated on a small scale. One, because um, you reached back out, so we really appreciate that you yeah, spend the time with us almost two hours. Um, but most of all, the the podcast was on a I say a lull. But we had less interviews than normal, so we wish we want to just thank you for reinvigorating and, and being a spark to our um, passion again. So it, it's like personal now, bro. So we want to thank you for that. I appreciate it, man. And the pleasure is all mine. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll that... you all take my back down memory lane there a little bit. To talk <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what you mean? Somebody enjoy um, your story, yeah, really... and mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody could benefit from. What you want? Um, your experience. Your experience. Because, yeah. boy, when you, when you tell me how you grew up there, yeah. I just had to be quiet about anything I complain about in life, bro. Yeah. That's true, yeah. But, I mean, the one thing that we didn't get to dwell on now, boy, you mentioned at the start of how people had a certain stereotype because they name and thing. Any of them experiences ever stood out there, boy? Yeah, of course. I remember um um going in the in the locker room in a, a CONCACAF Champions League game and um be representing come and they say Kendall Jack they sing and I was like, Yeah, look me. I was like, Kendall Jack they sing. I was like, Yeah, it is me. I was like, Kendall Jack, I was like, Yeah, I is Jaggy. Oh, oh, oh. And they looked at me, I looked at them and you know so I accustomed that even train that I expect that train. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I remember one time in National Assembly team, um the this was this guy named Dino boy. Uh, what's his name? Rudolph. Rudy, I think was his name. Rudy. Rudy was his name, Mr. Rudy. And my time with the National Assembly team, he tell me um they they well footballers politics, what y'all might know, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's politics. I know it's politics. And he was telling me the reason why I didn't make the team because at my last name them was looking them was whoever the, the power to be was looking yeah. thinking either Indian or whoever as you can yeah. he make a joke with me with that for the national twenty team. He said that's the reason why you didn't make the team. Yeah. Yeah. That is how stupid it is, isn't it? Yeah, I remember you telling me that, and that was just mind blowing. I have heard, I have heard, I have heard players say that they, they feel like if they was racially discriminated against each other, you know. And yeah, yeah. It's sad, but because I mean, we don't. Have, it's not to say like we could afford to be wasting opportunities and talent to us. Yeah, <laughs> for real. That that is oh. the most stupid reason I could think of. Well, like, well, like 
So what I like about your story today that, that I never hear before so far and doing this podcast and thing is uh, even without her agents, I like how you're batting for yourself. Though. Yeah, what? Well, around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going around yeah, the world yeah, saying, I, wait, yeah. what's that you said there? How much? Nah. nah that's like, after, after, yeah. after my first year in Thailand, I never had an agent after that. I, I broke out my deals, everything for myself. All right, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah. good, good. But you was doing it before? You was doing it before you know, yeah, and now? Yeah, you was, you was back to the thing. Yeah, I had to nah, live nah, by well that motto, boy. Every year I worry, dog. The man yeah, battling himself, yourself, yourself, uncompromising. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're sure. right, you're right. You are a business. You see about yourself. You put, your hand, you put too much of yourself in people and they can always rub pieces in your mouth and tell you it's butter. Do do that. Yeah. Yeah. I never hear that one. I never yeah. hear that one. I only do like with old people like you. <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> Right, Thank bro. you again right. for coming yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, Jaggy, blessings, man. Blessings on all, all, all my man. Blessings all the best Thanks, brother. Thank you, brother. Right? And make sure that what you went through, that you make it a little easier for those coming after you. Please. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Right? Yeah, man. Blessings, man. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings.